Tonight on Nate News Watch. Certain ETS routes may be getting rapid bus transit. We could go with some kind of bus service in the meantime to activate those park and rides to extend that service. Key issues in the election are under heated debate. We all need to share a common concern for the state of the economy. Students raise money for charity with help from the Edmonton Oilers. For them to start thinking about giving back and and uh, you know picking an organization that you know they want to help um, is, is is a great idea. Newswatch starts now. Good evening. The city is considering the development of a newer, faster, and convenient transit system to reach the outermost areas of Edmonton. The system, called Bus Rapid Transit, offers special bus lanes to get you to and from your destination faster. Our Brandon Hess is covering the story and joins us live from our news centre tonight. This may be welcome news for transit riders. First, a delay in the opening of the Metroline LRT, and an LRT running from Millwoods to the West Edge still years away, Talk of a new rapid bus service in town may give people something to smile about. With the planning of LRT networks across our city underway, a new rapid bus service is being considered to move more passengers around the city. Council is discussing the possibility of adding special lanes designated for buses to encourage faster travel times across Edmonton. Taylor Bratt takes the bus to Nate every day from the north side, where it can take up to an hour and a half. She likes the idea of a new rapid bus system. I actually take the bus from Fort Saskatchewan to Clareview, and then I get off, take a train, and then I take the 8. The proposal also includes faster buses running from downtown to Mill Woods. Currently, Express Bus Route 15 runs from Mill Woods to Eau Claire. The Valley Line LRT is still years away from completion into Mill Woods. Not only will rapid bus service benefit those in the north and south, but also those in the west, such as Lewis Farms. Buses carry 80 passengers, but the LRT can carry 1,000. Mayor Don Iveson is confident the provincial government will partner with the city to help support the future expansion of transit service in Edmonton. I think, you know, I, I think we should be organizing our service around frequency uh, um, and around um, dedicated linear and fast routes, not at the expense of all other collector service. Areas outside the Hende are good candidates. Additionally, bus rapid transit is cheaper than the regular LRT. Ottawa and Vancouver have already implemented bus rapid transit. Welcome news for people like Taylor. Bus rapid transit would be awesome just because the train right now is pretty slow and it takes me longer to take the train than it does for the buses. Bus rapid transit will also see fare collected prior to boarding in order to save time. The city is considering the proposal as part of a transit review and is expected to be completed by 2017. Now, Brandon, aside from bus rapid transit, what else is ETS doing to help transit goers? ETS uses smart bus technology, which will let you know how early or late your bus is. This can be found on Google Maps. Brandon, what are some alternatives for getting around the city quickly while transit riders wait for a decision to be made? Currently, Super Express Bus Route 100 runs from downtown to the west, and we also have the 15 running from Millwoods to Eau Claire. Thanks, Brandon. That's our Brandon Hess reporting live from our news center. It is one of the closest races Canada has ever seen on the federal level. With the Canadian federal election on October 19th, this will be the first time voting for many new Canadians. We all need to share a common concern for the state of the economy, for the commitment to democratic governance, um, and to issues that might be a particular concern to us. Yeah. Steve Patton, like most people, has kept a close eye on this election. With the economy at a low point and the Canadian dollar slowly declining, he says that Canadians really need to think about what's best for Canada overall when stepping into the voting booth in the next couple of weeks. Thomas Mulcair, the NDP leader, was in our city this week to try to come votes by speaking with all of the Aboriginal people well, disappearances that have happened. <laughs> This election is about change, and it's not hard to see why. In fact, you know better than anyone why it's time for change. According to the newest data, the Liberals and Conservatives are neck and neck with the NDP not far behind. But that is just for Canada overall. Strictly in Alberta, the Conservatives are way ahead of the rest of the parties, with the Liberals in a defined second place. 
Prime Minister Stephen Harper also made an appearance this week in our city at the Executive Flight Lounge in Nisku. For more information on each party's platforms and how to register to vote, go to www.elections.ca. Domestic violence in the capital region is an area of concern for city officials after a recent trend of deadly cases. Since August, four instances of domestic violence have led to murder or murder charges. Mayor Don Iveson believes it's a community issue that's driving law enforcement costs. I would like to see that trend stop. I would like to see it not be culturally permissible. Um, I would like to see the underlying um, uh, sort of bro culture uh, change. The murder of Colleen Salito in Fort Saskatchewan is the third deadly domestic violence case in two weeks. Iveson hopes the future brings change. I want my son to grow up to not find, to, to find that as unacceptable as I find it and to be encouraged to speak out about it. The 2015 Women's Symposium featured Iveson as he made statements on women's equality and domestic violence against women. Speed bumps have been installed in West Edmonton as part of a traffic calming pilot project in our city. These new speed humps installed in the Crestwood neighborhood have already had an impact on the traffic driving on 95th Ave. Area residents are grateful that they've been installed. They are almost a necessity. The uh, amount of traffic that is speeding and the volume of the traffic is uh, far too high for this neighborhood. The city will be conducting traffic surveys as part of the pilot project to figure out if these measures are working effectively. We're also looking to get public feedback on the traffic calming measures as well as the process um, associated with this traffic shortcutting pilot project. Residents are encouraged to visit the city's website for more information on the project. Edmonton City Council is raising awareness on affordable housing with a new campaign. For more about affordable housing, the city and you. A new website run by the city explains what affordable housing is and why it's needed in Edmonton. The website includes a short video. The City of Edmonton believes that safe, adequate and affordable housing is fundamental to the physical, economic and social well-being of individuals, families, communities and our city. Iveson hopes that the website clears the air on common myths such as property tax value decreases. Having affordable housing next door to you will likely have no effect on your property values. You can visit the City's new website at affordablehousingedmonton.ca. Aspiring fighter fire recruits are feeling the heat after Edmonton Fire Service's annual open house. Fire crews demonstrated exercises including a mock rescue of a trapped victim in a car and how to properly lower people from higher ground. Fire rescues trainers want to see new faces with interest in firefighting who are eager for future recruitment. There's a lot of people that self deselect themselves out of the process because they just think that they don't have what it takes, but if you want it and you try and work, you're likely going to be successful if you're willing to work for it. More firefighters are needed due to the opening of new fire halls and city growth. Successful recruits from this year's open house will become firefighters in 2017. Junior high students are competing to raise funds for local charities with the help of the Edmonton Oilers. Hockey Helps Kids, co-founded by Harrison and Chloe Cates, gives students a chance to make a difference. Four schools with four Oiler players as captains each create a video pitch for their charity of choice that will be voted on in March. You know, I think to get kids involved in it and for them to start thinking about giving back and, and uh, you know, picking an organization that you know, they want to help um, is, is, is a great idea. The school with the most votes at the end of the competition will win $25,000 for their charity. Coming up after the break, shelter is necessary no matter where you live or what you do. This week we talked to students about renting versus living at home. Um, it's for sure more expensive living by yourself. Rent is a lot more. Josh Ryan here. In sports, Nate Men's Hockey begin their title defense in style. The Eskimos make a wish come true. And for the final play, I'm on a horse. Happy Thanksgiving weekend, everyone. Looks like it's nice out now, but it could be cooling off going into Sunday, so better break out those gloves. I'll have all that for you and more coming up after the break.
Well, Thanksgiving's coming up. There's leaves on the ground, and I think I'm going to have some turkey this weekend. How about you? I know I'm definitely going to have some turkey this weekend. I'm just holding the, hoping the weather holds up so I don't have to bundle up the entire time. Speaking of weather, now joins us from our news center is Matthew Lorenz with your look. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it has been nice so far, but we are going to see some colder temperatures rolling in as that north wind comes down from the north. Going on to Calgary, first they're going to start off at 15 and go down to 9. Uh, they're going to be partly cloudy most of the day, and that's probably not going to dissipate much. Jasper, we're going to see, uh, well, they're going to have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, 5 degrees, low of minus 1, and they're probably going to see some snow, uh, so they're going to want to break out, break out the gloves and hopefully not the shovels. Fort McMurray, uh, they're going to be at 10 degrees with a low of 7, and they're going to see a little bit of rain, not so much snow, uh, and that's going to be for most of the day, not really clearing up too much. And moving on here to our lovely city of Edmonton, 15 degrees, low of 7, and uh, not a really good chance of rain, but we are going to see some clouds early on in the morning, and that's going to dissipate probably into the afternoon. And highs and lows for this time of year, averages uh, 12 degrees for this time of year is the average high, but as you can see from our earlier slide, that isn't the case. We're a little bit higher than normal. And the records this time of year, 24 in 1944. That would have been a good day to have today, but not so much. And then 1909 minus 10. Hopefully that doesn't happen too soon, but we all know it's coming. And that's your look at weather for today. Nate News Watch Weather is brought to you by NR92.com, the station for the students. Balancing work and school can be stressful and at times too much to handle for students. With the economy slipping and high tuition costs, some students are finding it too difficult to provide for themselves. Being a full-time student is hard enough, but when you have to provide textbooks, food, and other necessities for yourself, having a part-time job can make your time and homework even harder to juggle. It's kind of like give and take sometimes you know one gives more than the other and sometimes one takes more than the other so it's pretty rough I don't know all in all I'd say it's doesn't balance out doesn't balance out keeping organized making lots of notes and managing your time between school work and homework are just some of the things students can do to help themselves many college students are opting to live at home rather than renting an apartment in this week's student body Catherine Hill looks at the benefits and costs of each Despite an economic downturn, Edmonton's rental market is expanding. According to the Housing Market Outlook released in the spring of 2015, two-bedroom apartments average $1,200 per month. This high cost of renting has led many students to live at home rent-free. The time commitment of post-secondary education can make it difficult for students to cover the cost of rent. David Holzman chose to live at home while he attends Vanguard College. Uh, cost for sure is the big one. Uh, I don't pay rent uh, and I plan to graduate debt free, so on track for that. Even with high costs, rental can be the only option. Jordana Bannerman moved from Calgary in order to attend the University of Alberta. After living in the university's residence, she made the decision to live in her own apartment. It's just quiet and you, have your, you can study at home. Like before, I would always have to go to the library and stuff because there was always commotion all the time and I can just study here. Although she enjoys having her own space, Bannerman does find it more of a financial strain to live on her own. Um, it's for sure more expensive living by yourself. Rent is a lot more, but um, I think just working in the summer and all of that, you can save up if you really want to. Rental costs will likely continue to rise over the next few years, meaning that even more students may need to live at home while they complete their studies. While I'm in school, I don't pay rent. So when I'm done school, either I'll be working and paying rent or I'll be moving out at some point. Catherine Hill, Nate Newswatch. There's a lot going on in the pro sports world, but Nate's athletic squads are still generating a lot of buzz. They sure are. In fact, the men's hockey team began their season this past weekend. What was the atmosphere like, Josh? You know what? It was rowdy, Denea. Great fan support for our Ooks and a lot of positive stories here in Edmonton this past week. But I've got all of that for you right now. Defending championships is a difficult task at any level in sport, but when you have 2015 MVP John Dunbar and a deep roster, the Ooks have high expectations again this season. A solid crowd came out for the Nate men's hockey team to open the season against the Keanu Huskies. 
The Ukes took home their 15th ACAC title last year by winning four straight playoff games. Nate has a barrage of great chances early on against veteran Huskies goaltender Logan Stebner before Connor Hoekstra comes up the wing and fires home the quick wrister to open scoring and put the home team ahead after just 20 minutes of play. Halfway through the second period now, a Kenny Cameron snag leads to Hoekstra sneaking behind the defense after coming out of the penalty box. He notches his second of the game, putting the Ukes up by two and igniting the home faithful. Stebner tries valiantly to weather the storm for the road team by making a pair of spectacular saves, including this one on Clark Wilson. Finally, his teammate Wade Johnson picks up the errant pass from the Ukes defense and scores on the odd man break, cutting the Ook lead in half as they head into the third period. In that final frame, however, Captain Scott Fellnermeyer rifles home a beauty under the bar and John Dunbar ices it with his own tally as the Ukes go on to take the contest by a score of five to one. By winning 6-1 the following day, Nate sweeps week one for the second straight season. However, the team isn't satisfied after starting slow in the opener. Well, we bounced back big in the third, I thought, and uh, started to get closer to our game plan, but we still weren't at our full potential tonight. Despite an injury to star center Tory Hill, the Ukes women's basketball team is looking stronger than ever. Nate's female hoopsters recently defeated the defending champion Lethbridge Kodiaks in preseason action, even with their best player sidelined. Having to replace Hill's production is reinforcing teamwork. So guards rebounding, guards helping. If we all pitch little pieces, it'll all work out. Though Hill is eager to get back on the court, she's excited about the squad's early success. We've definitely picked up some players that have that outside shooting now, so it makes it definitely 10 times harder to defend. The Ukes finish the preseason this weekend against university teams in Kamloops. After an ugly win against Winnipeg, the Edmonton Eskimos enjoyed a much sweeter victory this week by granting the wish of a 14-year-old fan. <laughs> what, what you want to do? What you want to do? I like the piece. Right. Aiden Maurer got to practice with his football heroes on Tuesday. Diagnosed with cystic fibrosis in 2013, the Make-A-Wish Foundation recipient was grinning from ear to ear. It feels great. They're much bigger than they look. They really are. They make me feel small. It feels great. They're awesome guys. While Aiden is back in Bantam football, you can catch Eskies vs. Stamps right now on TSN. Spruce Grove's Panther International Volleyball Tournament features well-traveled teams this weekend, including squads from Bergen, Norway. Nyborg Volleyball Club is coached by Norway's national team head coach and former Edmontonian Scott Olsen. The club travels to Spruce every two years and billets the players with host families. They're incorporated into Canadian families. So we try and, we try and give them a lot of different experiences and to really experience Canadian culture. Prior to watching the weekend's headliner between Nate and Augustana, the players enjoyed West Ed's water park, the Rocky Mountains, and winning Harry Ainley's TVT tournament. For this week's End Zone Challenge, I went off the beaten path to try my hand at a sport that requires finesse, repetition, and an affinity for horses. I speak of the classic equestrian sport, English riding. I journeyed to the edge of Sherwood Park at Carousel Ridge, home of the horse and rider training business, Highbury Show Stables. My partner for the day, a hungry fellow named Stanley. Once my steed and I were ready, I met with the owner, Gareth Graves. Safety being paramount, we we're gonna put you on the horse and get you in a position where that sort of uh, is taken care of. Along with positioning, I had to focus on sitting straight and easing off the reins, which signals the horse to move forward rather than slow down. After guided walking, it was time to try riding Stanley on my own. Come on, Stanley. Okay, so the big fella needed convincing. But a few minutes later, we have movement. I even advanced Stanley into a trot, though my rear was airborne most of the way. Time to start jumping? Uh, you know, it would be ambitious. Well, I never did see Spruce Meadows in my future. Well, Josh, now you've actually ridden the horse, but that finesse factor still has to come, right? 
Yes, and I also need to finesse my way back into getting a seat again. <laughs> Your poor bottom. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Coming up after the break, many Edmontonians aren't able to put food on the table. We find out how much help the food bank really needs. Leading up to Christmas is always the busiest time, but even after Christmas, you know, once everyone's donated... Edmonton all... is in full swing. A traveling Canadian Heritage Fund program swings through a couple Edmonton elementary schools, and Yegg Comedy Fest has people in stitches. That and more in entertainment coming up after the break. Outerwear provided by Elite Sportswear and Princess Auto. This week, Danae and I went to the Edmonton Food Bank to volunteer our time for the hungry. We filled tons of boxes with donated food and sent them out all over the city. The second row of this will be over here, and this, all of that would be here would be over there. As soon as we arrived, we were thrown right into the action, labeling boxes and learning how to fill them. After our training, it was time to get down to business. The food bank always accepts new donations, but they are in most need of peanut butter, canned meats, and diaper sizes 5 to 6. Hygienic products are also welcome. The entertainment scene at Edmonton is thriving as fall takes hold. A scary local production is already up and running in its second year, and there are some local comedians tickling funny bones. Tyson Delany has that covered and more in entertainment. October is kind of a transition month. We're out of basically summer, but we're into fall, but that doesn't mean there's anything less to do around our city. Deadminton returns for another season of scares. This year, the crew tackled the local horror legend in the setting of the Paramount Theater. This year, Deadminton Haunted House adopted the legend of the Williams Farm after a local Edmonton film group made a movie based off of the legend, which is played before going through the haunt. The focus of the haunted house remains the same as last year. It's intended for adults, so it, uh, there's not much for adults to do during Halloween anymore. And I think everyone likes being scared. Everyone likes sitting on the couch watching a horror film, so uh, you'll, you're coming to get scared. Deadminton will run until Halloween night and is open Thursday to Sunday every week leading up to Halloween. This weekend, the Global TV Edmonton stage at the ATB Arts Barn is enjoying some of the best laughs Edmonton has to offer. As a reporter, because you can't have an opinion on anything. You've got to play it right down the middle. So when, sir, I think that is a very ugly shirt. On opening night, the Edmonton Comedy Festival hosted Media Challenge Night as local media from Edmonton took their shot at being funny. Many different styles of comedy were on display, but most performances stuck true to the night's theme. Every performance featured a jab at competing media personalities or outlets. Tonight, the festival is in its final night, with the date night gala beginning at 7.30. Lego Lindo Elementary School displays their pride for the Canadian flag and what it stands for. The school hosted the Hometown Proud program as part of a Canadian Heritage Fund tour recording schools all across Canada singing our national anthem. Kids from all grades at the school were split into groups and recorded as part of a larger multi-track recording to be published in December. We also did a documentary, so we, uh, we choose a student from each school, or the, we have the teachers choose a student, and they talk about what the flag of Canada means to their hometown. The master tracks of all recordings will be published in three versions, English, French, and bilingual. The tracks will be available on flagofcanada.ca in December. Firefly Theatre's high tea dazzles guests at the ATB Arts Barn as it fundraises for future events.
The event ran Sunday from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Baked goods, champagne and sandwiches were on the menu for guests to enjoy as they mingled between performances. So this event is a fundraiser, but it's also a chance for us to uh, let the people of Edmonton know that we're here. So it's about awareness. Firefly Theatre is involved in many local productions and events in Edmonton, like the Collado Festival, which took place back in September. Okay, so imagine this. You're in a cabin surrounded by bears. What's the best way to get out? Easy answer, just stay inside. Now imagine a puppy being taken outside, but instead of bears surrounding him, it's steps. You can clearly tell the little guy doesn't know what steps are or what to do with them. Although in the end, this little guy is quite ingenious in getting out of this sticky situation. That's been a look at your entertainment for this week. As always, you can stay tuned to Nate News Watch on Facebook and Twitter for all the latest. Soccer is the most popular sport in the world. Students at St. Mark's Junior High got to try out the same sport in a new uniform. These students are playing bubble soccer, a variation of the classic where each player can use their bubble to tackle other players to get the ball. This activity is part of a program at St. Mark's to encourage the kids to be physically active. What I would like for the students to achieve is to gain all these experiences so that they can kind of form a healthy lifestyle and a healthy future. Bubble soccer is just one of the many different activities the program uses to excite kids about being healthy. The program runs at St. Mark's during the school year. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'd try bubble soccer, but it looks really fun. I just wouldn't want to get hurt doing it, but it looks like a ball. I feel like I would try it because you'd be less likely to get hurt because you are in that bubble of air, right? Yeah, that's what you'd think, but just for some reason I think I'm going to flip upside down like it's a ball. I just feel like I'm going to roll off or and something. And then you'd have your legs sticking in the air you wouldn't be able to flip back <laughs> over. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I'm sticking to football this Thanksgiving. Well, that's everything for us on Nate News Watch. Have a nice Thanksgiving weekend.